I am the artist of my own fitness journey and my medium is diet and training, I guess. So, I recently did an experiment. After the 200 kilometer cycling race I did, I hiked and canoed instead of putting my feet up. This is called active recovery. You do low intensity exercise as a way to recover from a hard session instead of resting by doing nothing. And after three days of active recovery after the race, I was cured. I was no longer sore, I didn't have brain fog, and I felt re-energized. But is it really the act of recovery that did the work here? I'm reminded of a story from the Middle Ages. If someone had the Black Plague, they would write the word abracadabra on a piece of paper. Every day, you're meant to tear one letter off and take it to the nearest river, put it in, and watch the water dissolve it. Once you had done that for each letter, you'd be cured. Of course, this process took about two weeks, the natural amount of time it would take you to get over the plague or to die. So to see whether active recovery is true or snake oil, I turned to science. And I was deeply disappointed. The truth is that there isn't really any scientific consensus on recovery mechanisms. I tried to find a definition of what it means to be recovered after an event, and even this was way harder than I expected it to be. I found basically no meta-analyses or review papers on the topic, and even the little I did find didn't really express any consensus on what may work or why. The one thing the science is pretty clear on is what works for me might not work for you. In the words of the one meta-analysis I did manage to find, the course of recovery after a training session should always be considered on an individual level, from an overall organismic perspective. That is, in the context of age-related biological changes in the individual functional systems, performance or training status, sex and pre-fatigue status. In this regard, inter-individual comparisons and reference values for individual parameters are not feasible. Basically, it says, I can't tell you what to do to recover after a hard session because the best recovery for you is unique to you. This is the idea of intersubject variability. Also known as inter-individual variability, it's the natural variation seen in different individuals as a response to a specific exercise or training intervention. If you have high intersubject variability, there are some people who are here and don't get much benefit or good results from the intervention. Then there are people who display moderate results and some people who get lots of benefits from the intervention. It's the researcher's job to do the statistical analysis that will help us to understand these variations and determine the average or typical response to the intervention. Then they provide a conclusion about the intervention that is meant to be useful to the most people. In cases of low intersubject variability, most people exhibit responses that are relatively consistent. This means that they come close to the author's recommendation and the intervention has a more predictable and consistent effect, making it easier to provide specific guidance. However, in cases of high intersubject variability, the responses among individuals can be very different. In other words, what works for me might not work for you. This makes exercising even more interesting to me. It's something of an art rather than an exact science. You are working with a sample of one, yourself. There's so many factors at play and so much intersubject variability that you can't really take any bit of scientific knowledge and get a definitive answer of what will work for you. 
Also, there are so many layers and complexities related to exercise performance that it's very difficult to isolate anything enough to test it. My last long run was tough. Why? Did I eat correctly to fuel my run? Was I fully recovered from my previous workouts? Am I not getting enough zone 2 training done? Did my mind give up before my body did? The answer is probably a combination of all of these factors. So implementing a new strategy requires creativity and skill. I don't have one correct answer. Oh, I need to play around with it, following my gut, and I need to keep doing my best. To me, this is where the art comes in. You take the bits of science that make sense to you, say, the benefits of eating enough protein, the benefits of zone 2 training, the benefits of high intensity interval training, and you combine it into something new something unique to you. Something that fits into the time you have available. Something that you feel you can do consistently. Something that matches your likes and dislikes. Something you think is cool and fun. Something that makes you feel great. And what that looks like might be different for you than it is for me. I may take a different approach to nutrition. Throw in some strength training. Set some fitness goals like running a marathon. And add a splash of plyometrics. And a splash of climbing. Blending together all the parts of your life and the science we do have into a routine that makes sense for you and gets you the kind of performance you want is an art. You need to try things, to implement and experiment and fail and learn. And I kind of think that's beautiful and exciting. Any health or fitness journey is an expression of creativity. It's a subjective attempt to blend everything in your life together into this unique expression of yourself and your values. Which means that you are creating art every day. When you choose what to have for lunch, when you go for an easy run, even though you aren't in the mood, when you go dancing, when you choose to take the stairs. Sometimes this is messy, but it's kind of beautiful too, isn't it? To see some beautiful active recovery, check out the cool footage of me hiking glacier and canoeing around icebergs in this video. Oh God.